to Archie. It's the industries in my seat where they will leave, they will go abroad, and they will take their jobs, and I'm not prepared to make my this constituents is, worse exactly off. And I know what, that's no, exactly why you let him reply to us. Exactly what the said. Exactly what the Treasury said would happen if we voted to leave. Not if we left, but if we voted to leave. They published all these reports, the Treasury saying that if we voted to leave, there'd be a loss of confidence in this country, jobs would be lost, people would be falling out. I mean, what, what actually Remain is saying at the moment is that if we have a hard Brexit, there won't be enough people to fill all the jobs. It's not Remain. I've sat in select committees and heard the automotive industry, the aerospace industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the chemical industry tell me they will leave this country uh, and they will take jobs in Lyme Ridge. All the same, people, the same people that said that we should join Business the Euro people. 15 years ago. CBI and Chief Directors, they're all saying, let's join the Euro 15 years ago. Years ago. That was a Sam, disaster. Sam, I know you know more about that the automotive, disaster, automotive industry than Euro this. was a disaster, wasn't it? So, so we're going to join it. And I did have a great idea. So, so is a potential compromise an indicative vote? Sorry? Is a potential compromise indicative votes? I mean, I would accept the compromise. I think, uh, you know, I think Labour MPs who support staying in actually ought to accept the compromise. If we don't have the compromise, then we're going to have to move for a hard Brexit. Of course we will, because people have voted to leave. We could, we could take the compromise. I will go for it, even though I don't like it very much. But I think if, um, if people aren't willing to accept it, then we've, we've got to leave another way, of course. And it's still a total fudge. People out there didn't vote for this, and, and a compromise will just damage the country without giving them what they voted for. So we go back and put it back to them and say, is this what you want? or in the light of all the evidence that's come through in the last two years, are you sure this is what you want to do? And we will listen to them. So, if you're confident, potentially, that, uh, that Leavers would win the vote again, why not have the vote? Well, why should we? It's a betrayal of all those people who voted to leave in the first place. You know, we can't just keep holding referendums until the public get the results that the politicians want. And as I said, it won't make a blind bit of difference because the problem isn't with what the people have said. The problem is with the politicians doing what the people have said. The problem is, this kind of attitude is the one that's actually patronising the British public. They've sat here for two years and seen the absolute shambles that's happened in here. They're deeply nervous and deeply worried about what's happened. This isn't what they were promised in 2016. So I think it's patronising not listening to them to ignore them and try and shove well, through you Theresa May's deal or to drive the country off a cliff. Leave voters have not changed, their, change their minds. Leave voters have not changed their minds. There's a huge swing in my constituency. Leave voters are not changing their minds. They're getting more and more angry about it. Let's they're more and more angry about it. Why should they be forced to vote again just because you didn't like what they said last time? It's not about that. You're the one who's refusing to give them your chance to bundle through Parliament. So would you have another vote, another referendum in three years' time? No, this would be the final. The final one. Because it's a reality. No, it's a reality. I don't want another deal on fantasy. So people change their minds in three years' time. I don't want you to change their minds in three years' time. I don't want you to lie to my constituents. So tell them. I am in line. You were the ones. You, no, I'm not you. £350 but, but, million pounds on a bus. And, well, and, exa and that. that's exactly what we pay, isn't it? This is not, that is what this we pay, though, isn't it? You're not going to put that's it back what into we pay, the NHS, are you? want to create we could put it into a low-tax haven. You're, you're not going to. And that's a good point. What are we going to do when the economy tanks? With a hard Brexit, the economy is going to tank. We're not going to be wealthier. We do pay them £350 a week, don't we? There'll be no money going into public services. We do pay them £350 a week. There'll be no money going into public services. There'll be no money going into our economy. How much do we pay the EU every week? It's not. How much do we pay them every week? It is three, mine how much do we pay them every week? You said it was a lie. How much do we pay them? We do pay them £350 million a week. How much do we pay them? 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 You just said that was a lie. How much do we pay them? It is a lie. I'm not going to go into the seat because I know that we get more in the North East. We actually pay them £350 million gross a week. And you're going to pay them to the NHS. We could put that into the NHS. Will we give that money to the National Health Service? I'd love to see you go to the NHS. NHS. We could give it to the NHS. We could spend it on education. We could spend it on defence, on You're transport, or any, any other things. But we do pay them three hundred and fifty million pounds gross every week. So it's not a lie to All say the money that. That's going to be and taken anyone who says it is a lie, tell me how much public, do we do pay them? Public, public, public services. Public services are going to be yeah. run off the cliff Don't, because I, you, people are going to leave. It? How much is it? I, I don't know, and I, I'm not really interested. We're going to have much we pay the, the uh, EU no, every week. I'm not interested in the overall figure. I'm interested in my well, constituents' livelihoods. That's I'm because you're obsessed with this. I'm interested in my constituents' you lives, their jobs, and their livelihoods. So if you're going to accuse, I know it's 350 billion pounds. The NHS is a lie. Okay. We know you're not you, going to put that in. How much do we pay them every week? Stop trying to. I'm not. I'm just asking you. I'm asking you. We've established how much we pay them gross every week. What do we want to hear? 350 million. Yeah, gross. But you. What do we want to hear from the Prime Minister today? You're continuing to patch. You're continuing to perpetuate this nonsense and this is why you fought that you exploited people's fears and insecurities and the inequality in this country and the, and no, the austerity that your government you've thing. been driving the public been, services to the ground the for eight years, years. exactly and you're using I've been against you're the European using people's anger because, to drive your own agenda because 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 it's totally undemocratic we're having laws made for us by people in brussels who we don't elect so, there's not one person in a hundred who knows who's even in charge of the european what, union what about our members of parliament what about people that we vote into i'm interested in 
you don't need to know. I'm that. representing you. Know you don't know. This is the problem. Look, so most why people are you exploiting know. Most people know that Theresa May is a prime minister and that we that we have a conservative government at the moment. They may or may not agree with that, but most people know it. Nobody knows who's you, running the European Union. European. I ask your viewers out there, how many people know? Who is running the European Union? Who's in charge of the Commission? Who's in charge of the Parliament? Which political party is running? You're the answer is this not is one in a hundred. The problem is we have democratic representation. The fact that we don't engage with that in other countries is our fault because people like you have run the EU into the ground and used it to blame for everything that's going wrong in this country. You're making your point. Go on, Alex. You use the EU as an excuse. I mean, take the still works in my constituency, 3,000 jobs lost overnight. And people blame the EU for the government not intervening. That's not true. The government could have intervened. Three months later, they intervened to say, you know your, your ERG group have been running the EU into the ground for years and years, blaming it for everything from immigration to everything that's wrong in this country. When actually people, what people were angry about in 2016 is eight years of austerity, eight years of underfunding into our NHS and our public services, rising unemployment, high unemployment in areas like mine. And you exploited that for your lifelong uh, irritation obsession, which is with the it's European Union. Irritation or obsession. I believe that Britain would be better off outside the European Union. I find it bizarre that you're saying that we'll lose jobs if we... Uh, leave the European Union, but at the same time, at the, hang on, let me just finish. At the same time, you're also saying that there won't be enough people to fill all the jobs available if we leave the European Union and we don't have a visa scheme. So you know there are massive contradictions in the arguments that you're actually putting forward. People have been complaining that house prices all, all, all fall one minute and that, 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 that nobody will be able to afford the house the next. People have been saying, oh, we, you know, that the country will be flooded with cheap food, and then the next minute saying enough food in the country, so you can't even get your own scare I'm stories sorry, to line up. your government's own statistics. This is your government's own uh, impact that. assessment. This is everything your government's own words. Your own Chancellor said any said this deal is going to make people worse off. It's so how can you stand here and defend a policy that you know is going to make the British people government poorer figures. and it's going to make us weaker the, the, the same government figures, the same government figures that is. came out after the referendum, your government which said yes, which were wrong, weren't they, when they came out for no, the referendum? Well, these were, these they, were out they in March. These were the government... No, the Treasury figures... As to what would we happen if we voted. We no, but they're now, but they weren't about that, were they? They're about what would happen if we voted to these. We haven't left yet. Yes, but they and weren't the about that. So you're ignoring why is it, it, yes, so, you're ignoring so why, it why do the chemical industry tell me they're going to leave? To leave? No, no, why did you the, why there's why a does the aerospace industry tell me they're going to leave? Why does the automotive industry tell us they're going to leave with a hard Brexit? Don't well, patronise me. Industry. Why I'm are they not, saying no, this? Because they know they can get put because they're telling me. Experts are telling me. And then as soon as I question you on them, no, I know you've you, had you, enough you of experts. Forward. You rush forward. You've had enough of experts. Let's go back to a point you made. These are the business experts. Let's go back to a point you made. Okay. Thank you. The Treasury published figures as to what would happen. Your government's published figures. Your government published figures. Yes. My government Treasury did. Published figures. The Treasury published figures as to what would happen if we voted to leave. Not if we left. 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 Not if we I haven't seen those figures. Yeah, but the, listen, you haven't seen the figures. No, I'll tell you, you know what figures I have figures, seen. See, I'll tell you what figures this. I have seen. Your so government you, says you, my economy, my regional economy, me. economy is going to be, you, is going to be you're, disadvantaged. You're rushing off again. No, you're, you're, rushing you're off interrupting me. Sixteen percent, sixteen percent impact on the economy of the northeast, which is already hard. Is it? I have a youth unemployment rate that is two and a half times the national average. Are you telling me that hard Brexit is going to get my young people into work? But it's not. It's going to lose our chemical industry. It's going to lose our automotive industry. It's going to lose our aerospace industry. And my constituents who work hard in manufacturing didn't vote for this. They didn't vote to be worse off. They didn't vote to lose their jobs. They didn't vote to be so poor you didn't see and the create more figures. inequality you didn't between see the, the North East and London. You didn't look at the figures that came out of the Treasury. Oh, those, are figures, those are figures that came hang out of the Treasury. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let These me... are your government's figures that came you're, out of the Treasury. You're, you're not giving me much of a chance here. No, because you're, you're trying to talk about okay, other you figures. Carry I'm you carry on. I'm telling you about these figures. I'll see. I'll check my phone while you have a little chat. Okay, you carry on. It's an amazing way to debate. It's quite No, carry on, carry on. Oh, sorry. If I can get in. Let's not be patronising. I'm not being patronising, but I can't get in a word in edgeways here. Please don't speak to her in that fashion. Not okay. You've had more okay. than you've had more. Okay. You've you, had you, you carry on. You carry on. Thanks okay. for joining us, Dave. We really appreciate Thank it. You very much. Thanks very for nice. Walking in front of the camera. Excellent. Sorry, Anna. So you were talking to me about he, you know, he has some serious points to make. Absolutely. And I understand this is a lifelong obsession. People have been driving these figures. But for me, I live in the real world, which is the world of my constituents. We lost 3,000 jobs overnight with our steelworks because of a decision by the government. We have only barely holding on to our chemical industry. And I had meetings all last week with companies who are having to go back to Singapore and beg their bosses for more time because they didn't know what's happening with Brexit. Otherwise, they're going to leave. We've had Nissan. We've had all. Uh, but David Davis is right when he says that we gr the gross payment that we give to the European 
European Union every week is £350 million, pounds, and that could be used on uh, services here in the United Kingdom. But we get a huge amount back from the EU, particularly areas like the North East. We, are, we gain gross by what we get back from the EU compared to what we put in in areas like mine. They're actually redistributing. And the reason why people voted to leave in areas like mine that have been left behind is because they're fed up of feeling like they're always at the bottom of the list. But that they never get the jobs voted before. to leave. Absolutely, but they're changing their minds. And when I talk to them, this isn't what they voted for. They voted because they're angry and they're fed up and they're disaffected and they wanted people to listen to them. But they are realising now that what they're being promised is nothing like what they had in, in they were given in 2016. They're nervous about their jobs. They're nervous about the their polls say, but it, it is. I've seen a nine percent swing in my constituents. Some will still vote the same, but many, many are changing their minds. And I think if, if we're Democrats, let's go back to the public. Let's ask them again because it's not for me to predict what they're saying. It's not for David Davis to predict. It's not for people in there to interpret the uh, referendum how they want because. In speaking to people, there were so many reasons why people voted. There are so many different interpretations of what Brexit could be, from a Norway to a Canada to a Theresa May's deal. Everyone's got their own interpretation. There is only one Brexit, that is her deal. We've got to put it back to the public to see if it's really what they want, if they're willing to take this risk, or they're happy to stay in and reform the European Union from within. Sadly, we're out of time. We must leave it there. Thank you very, Thank you very much, much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Sky News, of course, has been campaigning for an independent commission to...